Welcome in, everybody. This is your boy, Pastor Cole. We're so glad that you tuned in tonight for another night of Wednesday night in the Word. Go ahead and get your Bibles, get your iPad, your laptop, whatever device you use to read the Word of God. We're going to make it do what it do. So let's like and share, tag somebody, call somebody. Text somebody, let them know that we're getting ready for Bible study, all right? So let's get started. Tonight, I want to unapologetically deal with something tonight. Yeah, I, I want to I talk about something, and I want to tell you up front, I'm absolutely believing God for new tithers that's going to bless this ministry, and then bless your life because you tithe, and I want you to try it. Okay, here's my subject tonight. Here it is. I want to talk about don't touch the holy part. Come on, will you just tell somebody, don't touch the holy part. Now, there are three types of people that is watching. And I, wanna ask, I want you to ask yourself, which one do you fit? There is the informed, the uninformed, and the unconcerned. Let me say that again. In every church, in every ministry, there is the informed, the uninformed, and the unconcerned. Now, let's distinguish them very quickly. Now, the informed, these are people who heard the word of God, and you sit there, you sit here, you believe the word of God, you've been taught, you've been sitting through series after series, you read your Bibles for yourself, you, you pay attention when I talk, you listen, you don't come here for any other reason but to worship God and listen to the word of God. And you've done it long enough that you are part of the informed. But watch this, but then there is the uninformed. And every church has the uninformed. And those are the ones that grew up in a context where mom was great, daddy was great in terms of morality, but not spirituality. Church was not a must. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a high priority on the list. You, you went, but mom and dad didn't go. Educated people believed in school, believed in learning, believed in discipline, stability, but not necessarily the word of God. Now, that's just real. So you are part of the uninformed. But then the third category, these are the ones I pray for, and they are the unconcerned. That's, that's like Matthew 13 when Jesus talks about uh, how the seed was spread, and, and they didn't receive the word. It dried up because it never took root. There, there's some people, and you may not believe this, but uh, that are watching uh-huh, that are watching with you, that, that come every Sunday, watch every Wednesday. They don't care what I teach. They're going to do exactly what they want to do. <laughs> you ought to just <laughs> type in a comment to your virtual neighbor and say, is that you who he talking about? You're just going to do what you want to do. I love them. I really do. I love them, but they just ain't going to change a thing. I, I, I don't care what I teach, and here's what's a trip, and I love them, and I know they love me. I know they love the church. I just want them to love God's word more. I want them to love his discipline, his ways, and his will more. And I want to say that is a kind of precursor to this teaching tonight. Now, James 4.17 says, Therefore, to the one who knows to do the right thing and does not do it to him, it is sin. Now, tell your neighbor, it's dangerous to come to church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when one is informed and you hear the word of God, the Bible says to the one who knows to do right and does not, it is sin, which bespeaks this idea that there are those who don't even know some of the things they are doing is wrong. And therefore, they don't have the same kind of conviction you do. Everybody got a friend that's doing way more than you that's wrong or a cousin. And you're like, whoa, whoa. To them, it's not even sin. To those of us who know better, and I'm telling you, there's something about hearing me that puts a kind of uh, spiritual pressure on you. Yeah, the piece of word that you learn is the kind you got to live, and, and we are held to a higher standard. And I want to challenge some of you. There, there's a difference between reputation and character. Mm, yeah, reputation is what people think you are. Character is who you are. Oh, let me say that again. Let me back that thing up. Reputation is what people think you are. Character 
is who you are. And how many of you know if it wasn't for Jesus, it's a whole lot of stuff that you would not do. Yeah, if you didn't believe he was looking at you and that you belonged to him, come on, say amen tonight. Give me some likes. How many of you know, how many of you, if Christ keeps you more than what people think. Yeah, Christ keeps you more than what people think, more than popularity, more than church people. It's the fact that you believe that he says high and looks low. And once you know what's right, conviction won't let you stay wrong. Okay, I got to hurry. I got to hurry. There, there, there's something about this with revelation and information comes expectation. Mm. Let, let's jump into this. Let's, let's jump right in because there's a word I want to teach at least once a year, and that's stewardship. Now, here's the definition of stewardship. Stewardship, here it is, is conducting, supervising, or managing of something, especially the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. Everyone, listen, everyone that are watching, like it or not, has been made and appointed a steward over your life by God. Now, if you think you know this, still listen, okay? Because God always gives new revelation if you listen. Something that you manage. Stewardship is the conducting, supervising, or managing of something, especially the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. Okay, all I'm trying to tell you is to be a steward, is to manage, and that you don't belong to yourself. Mm. To manage. How, how many children you have? How many, how many of you agree that they are not your children? Whose children are they? So, so, why, so why you don't introduce them as they are God's kids? Mm. You don't say these are God's kids. You say what? And you say these are my kids. Okay? And God's God is not mad at you. I'm not trying to be super spiritual because they are yours in a real sense. But really, we know that they belong to him. And your job, your job is to manage them for 18 years and bring them up in the admiration of ammunition of the Lord. Now, we may not be the best of friends for the next few years, and that's okay. <laughs> that's what I tell my kids. But I got to manage you. Y'all just missed that. You can't be their friend all the time. Come on. You got to manage them. And in managing you, this is what I tell them, I have to teach you God's ways. And if you don't agree with them, that's fine. Because I only have 18 years. Uh, uh, Aaron, uh, Destiny, CJ, <laughs> come on. And Ebony, I only have 18 years to manage you, to teach you stability and spirituality, and honoring women, and how to carry yourself, and how to honor God, I got to manage you. See, see, many of us were not managed right, and we had to find our own way as we got older, and now we're being reparenting mm, in many ways spirituality. But we're supposed to be managed right by two people who teach us how to honor God and honor the opposite sex and honor ourselves and most of all, keep him in all that we do. Beloved, let me tell you something. You are a manager of your life, but you don't own it. Woo! Because see, Psalm 24 verse 1 to me speaks to that more than any other text. It says, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, and everybody in it. The earth is the Lord. The fullness thereof, and everyone in it, which means everybody and everything is God. Yeah, your life is not your own. You are called to manage it. And a Christian steward says, first of my day is Jesus. Yeah, first of my money. Jesus. First of my talent belongs to Jesus. And when I don't give it to Jesus, stuff don't work right because the owner knows how to get his stuff when the manager, y'all not having, y'all not having church with me. Y'all not catching this. Okay, okay. I'm going to say something that's going to sound crazy, but please don't log off. Please, would you promise me, please don't log off. When it comes to your life, um, God is not in charge oh my god pastor you don't went crazy <laughs> what do you mean god is not in charge okay 
Answer me this. If God is in charge, then why do you eat a bacon ham hock pork sandwich last week? <laughs> see, see, uh-huh. If God is totally in charge, how you get a child by that, mm-hmm, by that no good guy? Mm, mm-hmm. If God is totally in charge, so, so you know where I'm going, don't you? See, we know ultimately that God is in charge, but minutely he allows us choices. Yeah, see, that's what distinguishes us from angels. See, angels, they bow and rise. They bow and rise. They worship. They were created to worship. So why come God did not make Adam and Eve robots? Mm, because it would be much easier to make them robots. You know, I must obey. I, I, I must worship. I cannot fornicate. I cannot sin. I must praise him. No, no, no. God said, I already got that up here. Yeah, see, see, if the angels, if they had to fill out a W-2 form, they would, they, they would put all we do is bow and rise all day. Because that's what they was created to do. But see, Adam and Eve, what distinguishes you, and let's have church right here. I want you to choose, God said, to worship me. I want you to choose to worship me. I want you to keep yourself, girl, with your single self, with all this love to give. I want you to keep yourself pure and holy. Not because you got to, but because you want to. Because you want to honor me more than you want a feeling. Ooh, brother, listen here, man. Brother, I, 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 I want you to not mess around on your spouse. Because even though she's not loving you or honoring you, you have such an honor for me that you say no to stuff that somebody else would have said yes to because you want to. I, I want you to come to church, not because you're scared you're going to hell or get cursed. I want you to come to church because something won't let you stay home. You want to walk in and throw your hands up. I want you to worship me when you walk in this church because I'm the best thing that has ever happened to you. Not robotically. That's what God is saying. But because, not because you, you have to, but because when you think of the goodness of God <laughs> that, that he displayed on your life, he said, I want some people that choose to love me. See, choose. He, that's what God said. That's what separates you from the angels because he gave you choice. He gave us choices. See, listen, I would be so mad if Lady Savoy Colbert was only with me because she had to be. <laughs> I, I, I don't care what y'all say. That, that would take something out of me. If, if she's only with me because she got to be, that, that's a part of me that wants her uh, to want to come home to me. Yeah, I, I, I want her to be proud to be Mrs. Colbert. And, and I'm telling you, beloved, that God, when it comes to stewardship, does not want some preacher to have to prock and prick and to convict you and make you nervous. He wants you to say, Pastor, I'm glad you're blessing everybody, but you ain't got to preach to me. God is going to get the first part of my day, whether you preach about it or not. God is going to get the first part of my money, Pastor, because without God, I wouldn't have any of it anyway. And I understand that he's the reason why I live, why I move and have my being. So I want you to catch this because Luke chapter 16 Verse 10, 12 says this, if you are faithful in little things, mm, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Wow. Every pastor has this. And I know I have. Pastor, when the Lord really bless me, I'm going to start tithing. Girl, let me tell you something. If you're not tithing with the $75 you make a week, you're not going to tithe when it's $7,500 a week. <laughs> okay, let me say this. Let me say this. If you're nasty single, you're going to be nasty married. Mm. Oh, you ought to type in a comment and say, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. What is going on here tonight on Wednesday night in the Word? See, marriage is not a fire extinguisher. See, if you don't take authority over your flesh now, 
then your spouse who you married to won't be enough for you. Oh, teach Pastor Colbert. Oh, I think I will. See, I got to be faithful where I'm at. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. And let me testify because there is some humanity in my Christianity. And you know people be saying, well, you know, Pastor, you know, Pastor Colbert and, and Lady Colbert, they have that ministry. They think now, listen, what this, <laughs> this is what tripped me out. See, you see my glory, but you don't know the story. So have you ever thought that maybe I'm not lucky, I'm just blessed? Woo! I'm not lucky, but I'm blessed. See, have you ever thought that God looked at me and said I can trust him? How can you know he can trust me? Because of the faithfulness in a little. See, when every friend I had was down at the club, when every cousin I had my age thought I was cuckoo, when every Sunday for seven years I opened the church so my pastor can get in, stayed in the sanctuary because someone was in his office. I did not leave until he got out of his car because there was no armor bearer or security. It was me that took care of my pastor. And when everybody thought I was crazy, I had a plan. God has shown me if you serve me now with this little bit you'll be surprised where I take you to so when you prove to God oh my God he can trust you ursuring trust you over the youth I, he's, I can trust you to raise your child with no help in the house and keep yourself together with no man in your bed and honor your spouse and sometimes you get lonely and frustrated and think do anybody notice but God got his eyes on you and when favor times come oh I said and when favor time come he's gonna tell the angels her oh y'all gonna make me shout in here I just want to know is there any Anybody that believe that you've been faithful and your season is coming you ought to type in the comment and say it's my time it's my time it's my time see there there's a time to sow and there's a time to reap the scripture says I'm in my reaping season <laughs> hallelujah when blessings comes to me I say Lord I receive I gave up a whole lot Gave up my, uh, my 20s. Gave up my 30s. See, somebody here done made some mistakes. Somebody watching me right now, you done made some mistakes in your life. But God told me to tell you, get ready for the next 10 years because the last five years, you've been waiting on him and being faithful. And he says he's putting the rest of your years under the blood of Jesus. He don't care what you did in your past. The last two years, the last seven years, you've been standing. You've been holding up the blood stained banner you've been faithful over a few things do y'all receive that give me some likes give me some heart he's about to make you ruler over many be faithful everybody be faithful i don't care what the enemy tells you be faithful to god Woo! hallelujah i feel god let me oh y'all tired of me i gotta hurt i know y'all tired i gotta cut some of this off because but but stick with me because verse 11 says and if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth who will trust you with the true riches of heaven I, I want to teach you something that I believe in my soul and I really do I believe this in my soul and that is how critical tithing is uh, I want you to get this tonight the tithe is not yours now that may sound simple but it's powerful trust me because did I tell you that there are uninformed that are watching that's like wow I never thought about that. You don't come to church and give tithe. You, you come to church and re, you return what's his. Oh, let me say that again. You don't come to church and give tithe. You come to church to return what's his. You come to church and give a first fruit every year if you want to. You give an offering because God's been good to you. You give and say, I don't even see this money coming this week. I'm tithing. I'm, I'm giving. Pastor, I'm putting this in your hand. I, I want to bless you. It, see, you just giving that because God's been good. That's optional. It really is. It really is. But the tithe is his. Mm. See, I don't care how many times I say it. If you owe me $50... You can't give me five. <laughs> oh, what's up, Cobra? I want to hook you up with this five. You don't have to hook me up with nothing. 
give me my 50. Y'all just missed that. Brother, you, brother, brother owe you 50 saying, man, I, I want to bless you with 10. <laughs> man, you ain't blessing me. How can you bless me? We got to get back to even, okay, watch this. Is that real talk? Come on. <laughs> I was going to talk about this last week, but, but I called an audible. Because I, 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 I didn't want to do the deep drill, okay, of this right quick, right now. But listen, I, I need to teach this. Watch this. He will, God will, pour you out a blessing. He, yes, he will. And, and I'm going to teach you, and I know you think you know that, but, but when I get through telling you tonight what a blessing really is, come on, and how tithing lines you up with the blessed place. See, some of you want company. I want a blessing. <laughs> See, I want the blesser. See, some of you want stuff, but I, I, I want the blesser. Some of you want a car, and I ain't mad at you. But I want the blesser. See, pastor, pastor, you don't want all of the above? Y'all, you missed it. You missed it. See, if I get the blesser, the blessing will get me the husband. Oh, y'all just missed that. See, the, if I get the blesser, the blesser will give me the health in my body. The blesser will keep my kids protected from the devil trying to rape them or molest them or shoot them. Lord, put the blessing over my life. And see, and some of you don't know, you're missing your chance to operate under a blessed open heaven. Okay, y'all y'all, y'all making me excited and I got to cut this off. So, so I want y'all to catch this. The tithe is not yours. And I got to tell you this, I got to tell you this, watch this. A false anthropology leads to a schizophrenic psychology. I'm going somewhere because I need my thinking people. Come here, thinking people. I need my thinking people here. A false anthropology, anthros, which means human, anthropology, the study of human beings, and a false of anthropology. Guess what many African Americans have? A false anthropology. It leads to a schizophrenic psychology, which is why we can treat each other so bad. Because when I have a false anthropology or a sense of self, a false sense of self. See, if you see a person from China in America, they still what? Chinese. And they will let you know it, won't they? Now, if you see a black person, why we're not African? Mm. See, everybody else leaves their place of origin and still maintain who they are. See, we get here and we don't know who we are. We're African Americans, we Negroes, we Blacks, still trying to find a name 400 years later because identity has been taken. So you're in a place that don't want you and from a place that don't want you back. Oh, I'm teaching gooder than y'all are catching this. Okay, watch this. Listen, a false anthropology leads to a schizophrenic psychology. That's why you can kill somebody that look like you and don't trip. Hmm. Now, let me tell you this, and watch this. Here it is. And your theology determines your anthropology, and your anthropology determines your sociology. Now, just look at somebody and say, whatever he's teaching, I'm agreeing with. Okay, I, I'm going somewhere. Just give me five minutes. Your theology determines your anthropology, and your anthropology determines your sociology. Theology is how you see God. That's what theology is. It is not a Christian word. Muslim has a theology. Buddhist has a theology. Your theology is how do you see God and how do you think God thinks, okay? Do, don't think I'm minimizing this because, see, there's people whose theology or their view of God thinks that God like men better than women. See, that's been taught for years in many churches, trust me, during slavery. It's because in, during slavery, their theology was that because of Noah's son who looked at his nakedness, and he said, curse. Y'all remember that? So they said, 
that was the African American child that led to the black people and and, 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 and and he was cursed because he beheld his father's nakedness, which is why we deserve to be slaves and deserve to be poor and deserve to be messed up because Noah put a curse on us and so God sees us as cursed. See, so that's why you can call me uh, a, a, a percent of a person and preach on Sunday with a robe that's clergy and then later on that night put on a Ku Klux Klan robe and then hang me. Why? Because your theology dictates your anthropology and your sociology is how you treat me. Mm, Y'all missing it. Your theology is how you see God. See, that was a long time to say one thing. And your theology determines your financial priorities. Okay, let me say that again. Your theology will determine your financial priority. How you see God in scripture determines how you tithe. Okay, let me help you. And God bless you. And I know I'm a little bit heavy tonight, but let me show you. Okay, turn with me. Look at Leviticus 2730. The message Bible says, the 30th verse says, a tenth of the land's produce, whether grain from the ground or fruit from the trees, is God. It is what? It is what? Holy to God. It's God's. Okay? That's what the scripture said. Your theology or how you see that text determines how you give money. See, if you like me and understand that's Old Testament chronology, that the medium ex of exchange was not cash money. No one got a paycheck back in the day. But what they grew... Okay, so the modern day equivalent of that text, see, if he wrote that text today, you know that a tenth of your check. You know that's a tenth of your check because then, because they didn't get checks back in the day. They only got what they grew, okay? It's holy unto God. I need y'all to stick with me. I know it's kind of heavy tonight. And many of you is going to miss your blessing because you keep touching the holy part. It is the tithe, the tenth, is holy unto God. Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden. The reason why they got kicked out, because there was a tree in the midst of the garden, and God said the rest of the trees you can cut down and, and, and burn them. Watch this. But the one in the middle, mm, the one tree in the middle is the holy part. Don't touch my part. <laughs> you see, God said, if you touch my part, all hell is going to break loose. If you touch my part, death is going to enter your body. He didn't die that day, Pastor. Yeah, but he started dying. See, age and sickness and molestation and divorce and rape and all this craziness. Yeah, there was no affordable health plan in the garden. There was, there was no food stamp plan in the garden. God had given them everything that they needed. Poverty and sickness. And the curse only came when? When they touched God's part. And can I tell you that when you wake up in the morning, everybody, and some of you know what I'm talking about, the first of your day is not yours. The first of your day is not social media time. The first of your day is not see who texts me. That's the holy part. You got to get up and say, God, you woke me up today, and I can't start this day messing with your part. I got to open up my word because when I don't respect your part, the rest of my day gets messy. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight, but I want to ask y'all something as I let y'all alone tonight. Night. Is there anybody that ever touched God's part in a couple of days in a row and, and, and you just and you were just off a little bit? Come on, talk to me. Yeah, you touched God's part and your days were just kind of off. Anybody didn't ever start your day with God or miss your word a little bit or miss church and the next thing you know, you started lusting and tripping and you just snappy and you saying, what's wrong with me? Have you ever stopped and say, you know, 
know what? I haven't gave God his part. And you said in the morning that I'm getting up and I'm getting on my knees and say, God, thank you for another day because without God, I can't do nothing. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Oh, oh this is getting good. See, when you get a paycheck from now to the day you die, take 10%. And say, God, this is your part. I don't care if you go to GTV, Greater True Vine, or another church. Don't you let the enemy fool you. Pastor, well, Pastor, I only made $600. Let me tell you, you better take that 60 out and say, God, this 540, you're going to have to stretch it. But I'm giving the 60 back to you. Plus, I need more than $540 anyway. I need more than $640. The bills I got, my check don't pay me enough. How many of you know your check don't match your vision? Oh, my God. Your job is not trying to match your vision. Your job is only there to give you some seed. Come on, tell your neighbor, my seed is going to meet my need. Go ahead. Come on, type in a comment and say, my seed is going to meet my, y'all not catching this. It is when you sow seed. God is supernaturally. Ooh, yo, let me tell you something. Your job don't give you enough. <laughs> your job don't give you, even mine. Even my job, even mine don't give me everything that God had told me. <laughs> See, I believe resources are coming from everywhere as I trust God that he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I won't even have room to receive. If you receive that, come on, give God some praise in here. Come on, give, see, come on, come on, give God some praise. I receive it. Listen, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. I think I gave you too much tonight. But all I'm trying to tell you, don't touch the holy part. Don't touch the holy part. That belongs to God. Come on. I, I want to encourage you and challenge you. If you have not been tithing or tithing consistently, you've been tithing but not consistently as you suppose. You've been touching God's part. I want to encourage you. Don't touch the holy part. It belongs to God. Because see, God can take the 90. Woo! Hallelujah. He could ask for the 90, but he could take that 90 and make it stretch with that 10% that you give to him. The 10th belongs to him. All right. Listen, I want you to call that number. If you need prayer or you need to connect with this ministry or you want more information about this, this ministry, call that number. And somebody will get back with you. Listen, it's time to give. If you haven't given your tithe, come on. Why don't you start tonight? Come on, there's many ways to give. It's up on the screen. You can give by Giblify, Cash App, Zelle, or you can do it the old-fashioned way and mail it to our P.O. box. All the information is on the screen. But why don't you start tithing? Come on, why don't you start returning back to God what's his? Because he said, don't touch it. It's my part. And if you give God what belongs to him, if you don't touch his part, ah, uh, you will operate under an open heaven. And how many of you want to operate under an open heaven? I know I do. I believe resources are coming. All right. Well, I'm out of time. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I, I pray that this word bless you tonight. I pray that if you was uninformed, that you got informed. And if you was unconcerned, <laughs> that you got concerned. And even if you was informed, that you got a revelation tonight. All right, join us this Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday morning worship. Yes, we are back. Uh, we've been back. We're open for service. And, um, and you can also, those of you that are out of state or are not in the city uh, or you're in the hospital, listen, you can view us on our Facebook live channel. Also, subscribe to our YouTube. Yes, we're also on YouTube. Why don't you sign up? You'll get a notification every time we put up a new video, all right? Well, God bless you. On behalf of Lady Cobra and I, remember this, why settle for good when great is available. God bless you and I love you. Be blessed.